Iconography standpoint, we found multiple ways of hiding uh, files in formats, and we're going to show a couple of those in our demo. Uh, they are quite nicely relating to the vulnerabilities we found. Now, from the vulnerability standpoint, we found high probability of malware detection evasion. So, uh, anti-malware scanners um, affected by these uh, 15 reported vulnerabilities with more pending uh, were unable to correctly process the entire archive and th therefore were missing uh, some of the malware pack inside it. Now, uh, there are few types of threat level you can assign to this. You can say it's very high and it's critical because if you are uh, at the gateway and you want to scan all the email and all the files that come to your network, you're going to uh, want to be able to scan everything. But uh, if you are scanning on the desktop or your endpoints, there's low impact because uh, for that malware to execute, you still have to extract it and that's where the anti-malware scanners are going to catch it. So uh, depending on uh, which uh, software security product you are looking at, uh, the impact is either high or low. Now, uh, we're going to go over this technology in the zip file format only, uh, and it's achieved by uh, modifying the name of the compressed file inside headers. So, uh, basically just by inserting a no character in front of the first uh, letter of the compressed file, you are able to hide files from you but that only works for WinRAR and uh, other processors will show up empty, empty file slot. Now there are other ways you can successfully hide files from all archi archive processors such as decreasing the number of packed files inside the header. So if you have the last file packed, you just decrease the number and the last file will not be registered. And we can use extra fields in the zip uh, file documentation to camouflage some of the header data and we can move the central directory to hide data from the start of the archive and we can also inject new data of course. Now what are the implications of this technography point? Data can of course be hidden in the zip archive uh, but data can also be hidden in the OOXML file format which is the open office XML file format used by Microsoft Office uh, which is basically uh, basically just a zip archive containing lots of XML files. So uh, since this applies to zip archives, it also applies to the Microsoft Office uh, file format. Now, uh, this is what's important because if we have injected data inside of it, it can self-destruct and it can do that uh, by, uh, by the actions performed by the user. So if I would uh, to hide a file inside a Word document and would you would to open that kind of file, Microsoft Office would tell you this file was damaged. Do you want to repair it? And as soon as you do, the file, uh, the injected technography data is gone. The same can be achieved by the antivirus uh, software because if you pack a malware inside it and additionally hide some stego data inside it, so if you're inspecting that kind of file and you have an antivirus working, it's going to say, oh, I found a malware in this. Do you want to clean it? And as soon as you do, the data is gone. So uh, from the forensic standpoint, if you are inspecting the data, uh, you must make sure that no other tool is going to interfere with the evidence, of course. Now, the implementations we found, because we didn't really invent this and we really didn't want to create new problems, there are some implementations you can see on the internet. There is Zips Technography by Karina John. Uh, it's uh, published by CPO license. It can hide multiple files uh, inside the zip archive which is stored just before the central directory. It can also encrypt files with the password. And there's another solution we found. It's called ZJ Mask by Winston Chu. It's a freeware tool. It uh, can uh, only hide one file inside either zip or a JPEG file. And it does that by prepending the file to the archive. It also damages the file in the process, but uh, it can be decompressed uh, generically. So uh, if you use uh, software as, such as WinRAR, you will be able to decompress such an archive. But since uh, that's not a valid archive, we're, we really didn't want to bother with that. Now, uh, we're going to disclose uh, the 15 vulnerabilities we found. Now, before we do that, uh, I just want to say that we acted responsibly uh, this way and we uh, published uh, we uh, disclosed all these vulnerabilities to the affected vendors with association with uh, CERT FI. So uh, let's go over them. Uh, most important thing is during our investigation and the stuff you're going to see now is mostly related to zip, but uh, there's at least one vulnerability for each of the affected file formats. So uh, most of these are zip. The first one is caused by extensive header modification. So what we did here 
is we wanted to create our own steganography implementation just to test our tool and in the process uh, we successfully hit, have hidden the file but we did extensive modification to the file header and that's uh, what caused the problem with some uh, security software vendors. So uh, here's what we did. Uh, we <coughs> used central directory fields to store some information uh, which uh, broke the file format uh, intentionally um, and replaced the first na name of the file with zero and erased <laughs> the local header content. So that's why uh, archive uh, processors in antivirus software didn't really work right. The second one was anyone could have thought of this, but this was a cool thing to try. We partially protected an archive with a password. So uh, we protected the first file, which is just an image with a password, and all the other files in an archive weren't protected with the password. So you can extract them normally, and some antivirus vendors uh, wouldn't correctly process this archive. They would find the first file that was uh, password protected, and they just thought the whole archive was. Now, uh, this one, uh, next one is the this weird hybrid uh, file method we talked about. So uh, this is pretty a, a neat thing to do. Uh, what we did is uh, we compressed uh, a config sample and we created a self-extracting executable with a zip and no antivirus in the world had a problem with this. Okay, Because um, zip is a specific format. Uh, when you are identifying the zip archive, you are going from the end of the file. So what we wanted to do is just append another zip file to the end of the uh, to the end of the SFX file and that's why when you are scanning the archive, you will be able only to see the last file which was appended and the SFX content which was extracted normally when you start the SFX program uh, the compressed content was malware, of course. And some uh, antivirus vendors went, went, and this was the correct way to, for scanning the, the file from the end, and that's why they only found the clean archive appended. Now, uh, <clears throat> this one is one of the stable impl implications to the zip archives. So there's an extra field uh, behind every central directory entry in the zip uh, file header and if you uh, use this data which isn't really commonly used by any of the archive processors you will be able to hide some data behind it so by damaging the header that, like that and just cloaking the next next uh, item uh, in the zip uh, header we were able to uh, successfully hide malware because antivirus software would just skip over that because they weren't processing the extra field correctly now another weird file format uh, example is, uh, which one I mentioned earlier, is where we added some fields to the zip archive which uh, made it look like a zip64 but no uh, archive processor thought it was zip64, it processed that, that normally. So that was um, an error with uh, identifying the file format itself. Now uh, <clears throat> next one is realigning the file to the 40 hex bytes and realigned is uh, quoted because we really didn't realign anything, we just uh, prepended the bytes. And uh, that actually breaks the archive, but since the uh, zip file format has both central and local directories, you can also extract this data generically. Uh, and software which does that is WinRAR, and it was the only one who was able to do it. And that, of course, uh, even though this isn't a valid archive, uh, if it's still extractable by at least one tool, uh, antivirus vendors want to support that case as well. Now, uh, we use the uh, file common field, which is exactly the same like the extra field. Uh, it's just additional data behind every entry in the header. Uh, and since this is rarely used uh, field, and we haven't seen er any of the files using this, uh, some antivirus vendors were just uh, confused about where the next header is and didn't really scan the whole archive. <clears throat> the next one is also a weird kind of format. Uh, it uh, relates to bad compression algorithm, but it's not really bad because specially crafted zip X file, which was introduced in WinZip uh, 12 version, uh, it has a new compression for the JPEG files themselves. So if you compressed a single image, which is a JPEG with the, this new uh, ZipX version, and you just rename the file to zip and use any other tool in the world to add an, another file inside 
uh, that particular archive, we still have a valid zip file because all the headers are the same between the new file 